Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, our theme is hope. So to hope, we need the presence of the Lord in our lives. So if we look at the human beings, actually human beings are re relational beings. Why do I say relational beings? Because people like to associate other people. People like to talk to one another and to listen to one another. Because God has created human beings as relational beings. We can see this in the book of Genesis when God created Adam. God told Adam, Adam, you should not live alone. And God sent Eve to Adam. And when Adam and we, Eve were together, we can read Genesis chapter 2 verses 28 says, Then God blessed them, God blessed Adam and Eve, and said, Be fruitful, and increase in number, fill the earth. That means God blessed Adam and Eve, and told them to increase in number. So that means God himself created human beings as relational beings. So today uh, a main problem that people are facing is the lack of relationship. And then people go through loneliness. Now in most of these first world countries, Elderly people go through this problem because of lack of relationships, they go through a kind of loneliness. And sometimes some of these elderly people are having company with animals like with human beings. I have heard some that when these elderly people, when they die, they write their wealth to dogs and cats because a dog or a cat has been their companion. So my dear brothers and sisters, sometimes even in marriages, when a marriage breaks and when two people go through a divorce, surely they go through loneliness. And sometimes because of a separation of the parents, the children go through loneliness. And when children don't have time for elderly parents. The parents go through loneliness. So, but today God is telling us, you should not live alone and you should not die alone. Because we don't know the good news, only we go through this pain, this loneliness and lack of relationships. But Today God is telling, I am there, I am your companion, I am your best friend. So first relate to me because human beings will be there today, tomorrow they will be gone. A person will really embrace you, appreciate you today, that same person will reject you tomorrow. But our God will not do so. He will always be with us and he will love us. So how do we know that it's so? The problem is we don't know this good news because we don't know the scriptures. My dear brothers and sisters, when you buy, we say a washing machine, when you buy a washing machine, you get a manual with it. And what do we do? First, we had to read the manual, how to operate the machine. So in the same manner, when God created us and when God brought us to this world, he gave us a manual. What is the manual? The Bible. So in the Bible, in our manual, God has revealed to us, if we want to live a happy life, how to live. If we want to do a successful business, how we should do a successful business. The manual tells us how to do it, how to live a 
peaceful, united, loving, married life. But the problem is, without reading this manual, without reading the Bible, without reading the scriptures, we read other manuals and we try to learn from others and then we mess up our lives. So my dear brother, my dear sisters, today we are going to learn from the scriptures. Today God is telling us, I am with you. I am always there with you. You can first relate to me because we see that Adam and Eve first related to God. When Adam was uh, created, first Adam related to God. Adam spoke to God. Adam heard God, saw God, and his companion was Adam, was God. And in the same manner, when Eve joined, two of them started relating to God together. So, we, let's read Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 20. It says, Jesus says, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Here, actually this verse, uh, God, Jesus spoke these words before Jesus uh, ascended into heaven. That is, physically before Jesus left this world, Jesus told his disciples, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So my dear brother, my dear sister, good news is we will have people, we will not have people. We will have material things, we will not have material things. But Jesus is always there. He gives us a promise. I will be with you always to the very end. So if you think that you have fallen into sin, Yes, we may feel that, that I am a sinner, I am not worthy, but Jesus is still with us. Maybe that we are going through sicknesses, going through pains, physical pains, but in that pain, Jesus says, I am with you always. So if we look at the Old Testament even, when Moses was called by God, and God told Moses, uh, God told Moses, to bring the Israelites from Egypt to the promised land. That's the mission that Moses received from God. When this mission was given to Moses, Moses asked God, who am I to do this? Who am I to go to Pharaoh? Then God didn't tell Moses, Moses, you are a murderer. Moses, you are a person who is hiding from the society. Moses, you are a stammerer. No, God didn't tell those words. God told Moses, I'll be with you. So, in the same way, in the book of Joshua, we see, God told these same words to Joshua. God told Joshua, I'll be with you like I was with Moses. So today, the good news is, it's not only in the New the Old Testament, not only in the New Testament, Jesus is with us right now. In and through, our death, in and through the death of uh, Jesus, through the resurrection and by, uh, by entering into our hearts, Jesus is with us. Just look into your life, just see how when we go to Mass, how many times we remind each other that Jesus is with us. Priest will tell us, the Lord is with you. And then we will tell the priest, and also with you. That means we remind each other that Jesus is with us. So my dear brother, my dear sister, if you make Jesus your companion, you will be very happy. I can share one testimony. Once we were called to a certain convent to do a retreat to certain nuns. And then after the retreat that Mother Superior asked us, can you pray for a nun who is bedridden? Then we agreed and we were taken to that room. And there was a nun. Uh, she really beautifully smiled and looked at us. 
and we saw the joy of the Lord in her face. She, she, she was an Irish nun. And we asked this nun, Sister, how are you? Then she said, I'm happy. Then we asked, how can you be happy? Then she said, I have a mission. So I thought when she said, I have a mission, I thought she must be praying for the whole world. Then we asked, what is your mission, sister? Then she said, Mother Superior has given me two girls to look after me. And their job is very tough. They have to carry me, wash me. So the Lord has given me a mission to make these two girls happy as possible. So my mission is to make them happy. So see, my dear brother, my dear sister, a bedridden nun who is on the bed is happy because he's making the others happy. So in the same way, today God has given all of us a certain mission. I can be a husband, I have a mission towards my wife. I can be a mother who, who has a mission towards my children. I can be a person who is working in office. I have a mission towards my boss, towards my colleagues, towards my clients. So do I experience the presence of Jesus with us? Jesus said, I'll be with you always to the very end. So right now, let's believe in the presence of Jesus because the more we believe in the presence of Jesus, we will receive more and more hope to go towards our life, to live a victorious life. May God bless you.